Benjamin Franklin once said, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. In his defense, he said this before the computing era. Today, we revise this quote. If you fail to plan for failure, you are planning to fail as an engineer. This is because if there is a way for code to break, then somehow, somewhere, someone will break it. Trust me, using exceptions, you can manage these problems in a responsible way. If a client asks you to capitalize an integer, you can decline their bizarre suggestion. And if someone asks you to divide by zero, then you can throw an exception letting them know what they can do with their division request. Once you learn how to do this, you will become an exceptional Python engineer. When Python encounters an error while running your code, it stops execution and raises an exception. An exception is an object with a description of what went wrong and a traceback of where the problem occurred. There are many different types of exceptions built into Python. Each one describes different types of problems. Let us begin by looking at some of the most common exceptions. Then we will learn how to handle exceptions when they occur and raise exceptions when necessary. To illustrate the exceptions, I am going to deliberately make mistakes in my code. The mere thought of this causes my neural nets to rebel, but this is for a good cause. We will put these mistakes in a file called exceptions underscore tutorial dot py. Let us first write some code to print hello world five times, then run. Instead of our welcoming message, there was a problem. The last line displays the type of error encountered, a syntax error. It also gives a terse description of the problem, invalid syntax. A syntax error means you did not follow the rules for how to write Python code. You will encounter this a lot when you're first learning Python. Above, you will see some text that tells you where the problem occurred. This text is called a traceback. In fact, Python displays a caret pointing to the precise location of the syntax error. Here, we see that we are missing a colon at the end of the for loop. If we add the colon, then run again. Everything works as intended. Let us see a few more common exceptions before we learn how to throw and handle them. One divided by zero. Run. Python knows this is not possible, so it raises a zero division error with a redundant description. The traceback lets you know the file and line where this mathematical sin was committed. If you add a few blank lines at the beginning and run again, then the line number in the traceback also changes. Next, let us open the X files and read the contents. This will be exciting to read. Why am I not surprised? Whenever a file cannot be found, Python raises a file not found error. The truth must still be out there. What if you try to add one, two, and three, but instead of the integer three, you use the word three? How I laughed while typing that. Here, you get a type error with a more helpful description. Python lets you know that you cannot add an integer and a string. This exception is very common. It occurs when you expect one type of data, but receive another. For the next illustration, import the math module. Then take the square root of negative one. I am not amused. The answer is I. We've known that for centuries. The math function expects a number, which we provide, so there is no type error. But apparently, it is afraid of negative numbers, so it raises a value error. This is used when the type is correct, but the value is something that cannot be handled. Python comes with a large collection of built-in exceptions. Here, we display them in a hierarchy to show the parent class of each exception class. Python does this to logically organize the many exceptions. For example, look at this subbranch. There are two built-in exceptions that are subclasses of lookup error. The index error occurs when you try to access an item in a list or tuple that is out of range. The key error happens when you try to look up a value in a dictionary using an invalid key. In your own code, use one of the built-in exceptions whenever possible. But if necessary, you can create your own exception by subclassing the exception class. One final note. Notice how most of these class names end in error and not exception. Why is this? Because that is how it is done in Python. The general way for handling exceptions is the try, accept, else, finally construction. You can have more than one exception clause if necessary. This gives you the ability to respond to different exceptions in different ways. Python begins by trying to execute the code in the try block. If a problem occurs, it jumps to the first matching accept block and executes that code. If no problem occurs, then after the try block is finished, 
Python will skip all the except blocks and run the else code. And finally, the finally block. This code will run regardless of what happens above. Error or no error, the finally block will always execute. Let us see an example. We will write a function that will read the contents of a binary file and return the data. But as an added twist, we will measure the time required to do this. This is something you might do if you are running a cloud service that build users by time used. We will be logging our results and timing the code, so import the logging and time modules. First, create a basic logger with debug level. We will use this logger to record both exceptions and time used. Now, define the function. The input is the path to the binary file. Next, demonstrate your responsible nature by writing a doc string. First, we record the time the method began. Next, we will try to open the binary file and return the contents. By default, open assumes you are opening a file in read text mode. We will override this default and open the file in read binary mode. Next, read the contents of the file, then return the data. If the file does not exist, Python will raise a file not found error. We can handle this situation with an accept line. Type the keyword accept, the name of the exception class, and then give the exception a name. This assigns the exception object to a variable named ERR. You can name your exception anything you like. In the event the file does not exist, we will log the error. There is not much more we can do, and it does not make sense to return anything. So we can type the raise command to instruct Python to pass along the file not found error to the user. Next, we write an else block. This code only executes if there are no exceptions in the try block. In this case, we want to close the file. We cannot close the file in the finally block, because if the file does not exist, f will not be a file object. And finally, the finally block. This code always executes. If everything worked, or if there was an exception, it does not matter. Here, we record the stop time. Compute the time required. Then, log the value. In reality, you would likely store the time required in a database, but for simplicity, we are logging the time. This function uses all four parts of working with exceptions, try, accept, else, and finally. It is now time to test it. First, we will read an audio file. Run. No errors were raised. And if you look at the log file, you can see the time required to read and return this audio file. Next, let's read a much larger video file. Again, everything worked fine and the log file showed it took a bit longer to read the video file. Next, try to read a file that does not exist. Uh-oh. This file does not exist, and the function passed the file not found error onto us for handling. If you look at the log file once more, you will see the error message along with the time required. Zero. Our users will be sad about the lack of data, but happy there will be no charge. A wise creature once said, do or do not, there is no try. Apparently Yoda never wrote code, because when writing software you are trying all over the place. I will now try to convince you to support us on Patreon. If you raise a money not found error, we will completely understand. Else, any support you can offer will make me smile on the inside.